Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Gustola here with uh, Shadowproof, and I'm glad to be joined by Ray McGovern. Thank you for joining us, Ray. Most welcome. And I wanted to talk to you about, uh, well, the reaction to the Hunter Biden emails that were published by the New York Post, and then specifically the intelligence agency's reaction to their publication and how, yet again, we are hearing that we should believe that this is the product of some kind of Russian disinformation uh, operation that is being brought against all of us. So I know that you wrote something. I know you've been paying close attention. I know you were outraged about the officials who signed on to a letter saying that that's what we should believe about these emails. Um, wh why is it outrageous? Why are they so wrong? Well, the officials that uh, said that uh, we need to be very, very suspicious uh, that the Russians might be behind uh, this business about uh, Hunter Biden's email hard drive, uh, they're the ones that stand most to lose uh, if uh, Joe Biden doesn't win, let's put it that way. I mean, these are the people that constructed out of whole cloth what we know as Russiagate. And uh, so it was extremely ironic that you have uh, culprits like uh, James Clapper, uh, John Brennan, uh, John McLaughlin, all these, all these other people who are clearly liable uh, to being uh, shown up if the mainstream media had any guts. Instead, they're defending uh, the uh, suppression, the virtually complete suppression of this story. Now, I probably should tell you, Kevin, that uh, I voted this morning for Joe Biden. I held my nose for about five minutes and did so. Why? Well, because uh, Donald Trump has been the worst president the United States ever had. There's no gainsaying that. But, you know, that doesn't dispense us from reality. That doesn't mean that Joe Biden is going to be any more powerful with respect to the people who really run this country, which is uh, referred to as the deep state. I, I prefer national security state. They're still in charge. And if they escape, <laughs> if they escape responsibility or all accountability for what they did over the last four years plus, then, you know, it's going to be more st deep state. Deep state will be even more encouraged to do exactly the same thing again. So the stakes are high. And yeah, uh, I don't hope there's four more years of this clown, but that doesn't dispense me from telling the truth. But it seems to dispense a lot of my former friends and I guess, Kevin, most of your audience will know that these are not current intelligence officials. These are old ones. These are the discredited people like uh, like Hayden from the NSA and from CIA, like Brennan, like Clapper, all these folks. Uh, there were precious few that avoided signing on. And the whole thing is very transparent. The last thing I'll say on this is that uh, as, I, as soon as I learned of this last night, about 11 o'clock, I said, my God. God, you know, talk about politicization of intelligence. Uh, here it is on steroids, okay? And someone said, hey, you ought to look at uh, Tucker Carlson. Not my favorite commentator. Matter of fact, I can't think of anyone I'm less close to on domestic affairs. But here he had it. He had the story. And the story has been suppressed. Now, I tacked that on to an email. Not an email, but a, a tweet that I did around midnight. And guess what? This morning... The tweet no longer works. YouTube has taken down. The tweet is still there. But when people click on the little link to YouTube, it has disappeared. It's been taken down. So I did another tweet just now, uh, which uh, links to a uh, Fox News uh, uh, link that uh, shows the first 14 minutes of Tucker Carlson last night. The first 20 are worth, worth looking at because he has Glenn Greenwald as, as well as many others on for those next six minutes. But look at the 14 minutes and see what you think. Uh, it's, you know, it's ironic in the extreme for me to be saying, look at Fox News and not at my former intelligence colleagues. <laughs> yeah, so let's take just a minute. Uh, I'll read one uh, bit from this and then uh, we'll, we'll 
pick up part of, uh, we'll go uh, look at a couple specific questions here. So this is from the letter that we're referring to. It's from October 19th. It's their public statement on the Hunter Biden emails. And like you say, it's not from any current U.S. intelligence officials. These are all people who were there previously and under prior administrations. And so they they write to, they put their names to this statement. We want to emphasize that we do not know if the emails provided to the New York Post by President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, are genuine or not, that we do not have evidence of Russian involvement, just that our experience makes us deeply suspicious that the Russian government played a significant role in this case. Uh, and then they go on again, if we are right, this is Russia trying to influence how Americans vote in this election. And we believe strongly that Americans need to be aware of this. But again, only deeply suspicious. They don't know. They don't have any evidence. They're just spreading rumor. Well, you know, John Brennan uh, famously said at a congressional hearing, I think Trey Gowdy asked him the question, uh, how about the evidence? And John Brennan said, and I quote, we don't do evidence. Uh, what? <laughs> we don't do evidence. And Trey Gowdy looked at him and said, well, <laughs> a great, Trey was sort of open mouthed in amazement. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. In the old days, back in the day, we did evidence. That's what we, you know, we had as much evidence as we could gather. Then we they interpreted it and we tried to tell it like it was. Now, if they don't do evidence anymore, well, hello, this is the Brennan, uh, the Brennan procedure here, where my former colleagues say, well, we don't have any evidence, but you know, the Russians do this, the Russians do this, the Russians did this, and it bears, as they say in the thing, bears all the earmarks of a Russian information operation, end quote. Give me a break. Give me a break. Without any evidence, all you have is nothing. And uh, the fact that these people would speak out now, even when the people who actually are running the intelligence community namely this fellow Radcliffe, um, who's the National Intelligence Director, when he says, there isn't any evidence of this. And, uh, and Schiff, Adam Schiff, is speaking through his hat, as usual. He's making it up. <laughs> and the intelligence community has no evidence. Well, OK, that's all right. We're deeply suspicious because, well, take Clapper, for example. Clapper is the first name on this thing. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that he, we wouldn't have his name on there because he's a he's a perjurer. He admitted that he lied to Congress in formal testimony under oath and later apologized by saying, well, what I said was clearly erroneous. Oh, oh that's OK. And Obama says, well, yeah, uh, don't do that anymore. Uh, but you could say you could say as head of all intelligence for three and a half more years which is what happened. So what's Clemmer's expertise on all this? Well, you could see it in this, in this memorandum. Uh, he saw fit to claim, and he has a lot of experience with Russia. Mm -hmm. He comes out of the Curtis uh, LeMay school of Russian thinking. Curtis wanted to obliterate Russia, as you remember. Now, he didn't identify himself specifically with Curtis LeMay, but he did say this, you know, historically, uh, the Russians are almost genetically inclined to deceive, to penetrate, to blah, 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 blah. Almost genetically inclined to do that. We know that from history. So uh, you don't need any evidence. <laughs> That's the way they are. It's the Russians. It's the Russians. It's the Russians. Now, uh, Clapper can feel confident to still sign these things without any real danger of being exposed because who's going to expose them? Kevin? Ray? Yeah, right. right. We're not going to get into the media, are we? And so he can say these things and no fact checks will happen. And this Biden hard drive thing, which is incredibly significant, is going to be suppressed. What's the debate going to be like uh, on uh, what, Thursday? Well, there's some rumors, at least I've seen, that uh, foreign foreign policy won't be discussed. Well, does that mean that uh, Hunter Biden and Ukraine and China and other places can't be discussed? 
<laughs> give me a break. So the whole thing is rigged. Uh, I refer very often to what used to be the MIC, the military industrial complex. You remember Eisenhower said that. What it's evolved into now, and maybe your, your, your viewers would uh, try to take a note on this, it's very easy to remember. It, it, it rhymes with Mickey Mouse, okay? It's the Mickey Mat, the military, industrial, congressional, intelligence, media, academia, think tank, complex. Mickey Mat, write it down. Now, why did I say media? Well, because media is the brand new element here. The media has been co-opted into the rest of this stuff. Who profits from all this stuff? The military industrial complex, the Mickey Mat, and, and of course, Israel, who is a kind of beneficiary of all this, because Biden is not going to change our policy one whit with respect to Israel. Even, even the Iran nuclear deal, you know, he, he says he's going to renew that. Well, I'm from Missouri. When Biden gets in there, he's going to face all kinds of of uh, pressure from the lobby. Eh, you don't have to reason. You know, the, the Iranians are working on a nuclear map weapon. Well, they're not working on a nuclear weapon. And the intelligence community, the real ones, the ones that did an honest job back in 2007, said, and it continues to be the case, there is no sign that Iran is working on a nuclear weapon and that they stopped doing that in 2003. Was that 17 years ago? That judgment holds. Now, I don't know if Biden will reiterate that. Uh, he will be as, as subservient to the Israel lobby as the others. So it's a real mess we're in. It's just that and when you compare the two, my God, uh, well, enough said about that. Yeah, it, you know, it, it truly seems to me that there, there are a few really important issues here that are not being confronted. You know, one is the fact that we're seeing in this crisis of democracy, when people are concerned about the threat of authoritarianism, that the media is actually protecting the challenger of this authoritarian, which would seem to drive his supporters and people in this country um, into the arms of him, you know, to say, well, this is wrong. The, the media shouldn't be protecting uh, Joe Biden. We should have an open election. And, and if, if he does it, if he disagrees with what is being said about him, then his campaign should be the one that responds to these emails. But, but, but by and large, what we're still dealing with here is this kind of, uh, I have no other way of describing it, uh, and maybe you wouldn't put it this way, but I would say post-traumatic stress uh, disorder kind of reaction to the emails that were published around Hillary Clinton's campaign back in 2016 and the fact that basically the Democrats just do not think that they should have to respond to any of this material um, and, and prove it. So we've fallen back on this whole thing of if we're going to be held accountable, we're just going to say to people that it must be Russia so that we don't have to deal with any of these inconvenient truths. Well, I think that's largely right. Uh, it's Russia, 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 Russia. Now, uh, we know now that the Russian intelligence service um, had a, a message, apparently, it seems to have been an intercept, um, saying that uh, Hillary Clinton herself decided uh, and authorized uh, the campaign, her campaign, to identify uh, all this stuff with Russia, to blame Russia, uh, to associate Trump with Russia. And uh, hello, that, that seemed to be a, a, a bombshell. Well, <laughs> I mean, it was very clear. <laughs> was happening as soon as Julian Assange announced that he had emails relating to Hillary Clinton. Now that was on the 12th of June, 2016. So put yourself in the position of Hillary Clinton and the DNC. She gets her advisors around. She says, oh my God, my God, he's got emails he's at DNC. Oh my God. If he's got the DNC emails, he'll be able to prove by her own writings that we stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Oh, this is awful. What are we gonna do? He's gonna. He said that he's gonna release them. He said they're pending publication. It's mid June, twelfth of June. 
So they get around the table. Now I wasn't a fly on the wall. I wasn't allowed in the White House anymore. Okay. So so there they are. And one, one guy says, Well, I got an idea. Let's blame it on Russia. And she says, uh, but it wasn't Russia, it was WikiLeaks. That's okay. We'll get a twofer. Uh, we hate WikiLeaks as much as Russia. We'll say Russia hacked and gave it to WikiLeaks. Hillary. Anybody got a better idea? Okay, we'll go with it. Now, you don't have to believe McGovern on this. Talk to her PR person, a, a lady named Jennifer Palmieri, who chapter, who chapter and verses it, so to speak, as to what they did at the Democratic National Convention three days after Julian finally did publish these materials. The whole thing was, why did Russia do this? Why did Russia do this? John McCain, this is an act of war by Russia. What and what was lost in the shuffle? <laughs> the content of the emails. Why? Because the content showed that she stole the nomination from Bernie. It was clear and simple, but nobody read the content. But then Russiagate was going out, was, was off and running. Uh, Hillary, Hillary had already seen some merit, she thought, in this. And uh, when she lost, my God, there had to be an explanation as to why she lost. And the explanation, of course, was that the Russians hacked and gave the emails to WikiLeaks. Now, just uh, it shouldn't be an aside here. It should be very important. We know now that in December, namely on December 5th, 2017, okay, Adam Schiff's committee there, the House Intelligence Committee, learned from the head of CrowdStrike, the cyber firm that the FBI left uh, the, the forensics to of the DNC emails. Uh, Sean Henry, the chief of the of CrowdStrike, testified, and Adam Schiff asked him, now, Mr. Henry, uh, could you please tell us uh, when the Russians hacked those uh, DNC emails? And Henry started speaking, then his, his lawyer tugs his, his uh, oh, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Schiff, uh, we have no evidence that those emails were exfiltrated. Now, very often we have evidence when we do the forensics that emails or something else are exfiltrated, but in this case, we don't have any evidence that they were exfiltrated. Well, exfiltrated is a fancy word for hack, right? That means not only did the Russians not hack the DNC, nobody hacked the DNC. As we said three years ago, what happened was some insider took a little thumb drive, stuck it in a machine or a server, uh, copied that information, put it in their pocket, not Putin's pocket, their pocket, and gave it to WikiLeaks. That's how it happened. There is no evidence that the Russians hacked. Does anybody know that? Well, no. You know why? Because Adam Schiff sat on that information from December 5, 2017, until May 7, 2020. It's a long time. Oh, okay, so it was announced on May 7th, 2020? Yeah, it was. Oh, oh great. Well, wait a second. How come nobody knows about it? <laughs> There's not been a word, not been a word in the New York Times or the mainstream press that the fact that, of the fact that Sean Henry gave the death knell to this claim about Russian hacking. He was the guy. It's the horse's mouth. He said there was no exfiltration that they detected, and, of course, they were hired to detect it. The other thing is he never gave a final report to the FBI. Now, the FBI, why didn't they look into those uh, emails? Well, it's very, you know, what, what James Comey says is, you know, we tried. We asked at many levels to, to get access to the DNC, but they wouldn't let us. Oh, give me a, <laughs> give me a break. You know, all he had to do is do a little letter or get some judge to approve. A, 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 yeah, I mean, hello. They didn't get into the ENC emails because they didn't want to get into. They want to say CrowdStrike had them. And now CrowdStrike admits not only that they didn't get in, they didn't find any hacking, but they never gave the FBI a final report. And James Comey is just fine with that. So there's something very, very funny. Something smells very bad here. And uh, as long as uh, as long as Trump loses, as I hope he does. Uh, these people will never be held accountable. That's why you have Comey being so slick and diffident that when he's asked real questions by the Senate uh, uh, Judiciary Committee, uh, among them, 
Well, do you remember getting that that report that the Russians were aware that Hillary Clinton authorized identifying the Trump campaign with Russia at the end of July 2016? Were you aware of that? And what does Comey say? <sighs> it doesn't ring any bells. Well, the next question should have been, well, it was referred to you guys by the CIA for, for investigation. I mean, hello, you were aware of that? Uh, it doesn't ring any bells. So, so they're all they're all in this kind of stuff. And uh, the the bad thing, in my view, of a uh, of a Biden of a Biden victory here is that they will be smug and they will be reinforced in the notion that they can do whatever the heck they want. They'll never be held accountable. Why? Because people are afraid of them. People are afraid of them. And the last thing I'll say in that that connection is that after Trump did win and the shock sort of wore off, uh, the Democrats all got together and said, how are we going to how are we going to handle this? Well, first thing first up was Rachel Maddow and uh, and Chuck Schumer, senator from New York, uh, Senate Majority Leader. OK, Chuck, Rachel, I have something really important to import. And Rachel, oh, what would that be, Chuck? Uh, you know, I used to think Trump was a pretty smart guy, but he's done something very foolish. Oh, what would that be, Chuck? Well, he's taken on the intelligence community, and they have six ways from Sunday to get you. So, again, I thought he was a smart businessman. He knew which uh, battles to take on, but he's done something really stupid. The 3rd of January, 2017, two days later... In the White House, Obama and Biden uh, run this little meeting as what they're going to do to candidate, not candidate, but president-elect Trump two days later on the 6th, or um, the day later on the 6th of January. And they decide, well, number one, we'll show them this wonderful memo that we have without any evidence that says Putin himself is responsible for Trump becoming president. Now, that's, that's in a nutshell. And then, yeah, Jim... You show him what we got on him in the steel dossier where he was cavorting with prostitutes there in Moscow and so on. You, you show him that just, <laughs> just to show him, okay? And then, by the way, we'll go, we'll go get uh, Flynn. Why get Flynn? Well, my God. He says he's going to run an audit on what John Brennan's been doing. He knows where the bodies are buried. We got to get Flynn the hell out of there before he comes national security uh, advisor or shortly after there. And they did. OK, so what happens on on the 6th of January? Schumer, Maddow, third. White House meeting, fifth. On the 6th, uh, the gang of four, uh, the top intelligence uh, community people, Clapper, director of central uh, director of national intelligence, Brennan, CIA, Comey, FBI, and this guy, Alexander, I guess it was, from uh, from NSA. Okay, so they descend on the Trump Tower, and they say, oh, Mr. Trump, we have this uh, this memorandum, which we've just done, and it's been released to the press. It's actually published today, and it says that Putin directed this information campaign to help you win and make you president. So we want to let you know about that. And then Comey says, now, gentlemen, uh, I have something very sensitive to raise with the president. Could, could you leave us alone? So the other three leave. And Comey says, Mr. President, I don't know how to, how, to, how to approach this. It's very awkward. But we have this, this dossier, and it's very scurrilous, and it's not confirmed yet. But, but has you cavorting with prostitutes in Moscow and has it? Now, <laughs> Trump later said, my God, I told him that's crazy. That's a, that's a, it's just, well, just so you know, Mr. President. Uh, just just so you know, because the press has it now and, and they're probably going to release it. And the, just so you know, now, Trump, he's a real estate guy from New York, right? <laughs> he doesn't know how the game is played in Washington. If it were I, I would have said, thank you very much, Mr. Comey. Now, please go back to your office, clean out your desk. You're out of here. You're out of here as soon as I become president. I know that trick. That's J. Edgar Hoover on steroids. Don't pull that stuff on me. OK. That's what I would have done. Instead, what does Trump do? Oh, I think I can get him on my side.
yeah, I can think I can get him loyal. So he tries for five months to get him loyal and then has to fire him. And finally, when he's asked to explain this in an interview with the New York Times, mind you, he says, yeah, I, I was forced to conclude that, that James Comey was trying to get some leverage over me. Uh, he wanted to get a handle on me. And now I realize what happens to the president elects uh, at the hands of the national security state. So, you know, the whole thing is pretty, pretty obvious to anybody who's paying attention. The facts that the Russians got onto this uh, caper uh, in the end of July and, and put it in a message, I guess, going back to Moscow, that, that's, you know, should that be such a bombshell? Not if you're, not if you're paying attention. But even if you're paying attention, if you rely on the mainstream media, I'm sorry to say that you're not only malnourished on useful information, but you're, what you do know is wrong. So uh, here's the problem. Will, <laughs> will there be any discussion this week about Hunter Biden's hard drive? Now, if the mainstream media has anything to say about it, or the Mickey Matt has anything to say about it, the answer will be no. So, you know, the the uh, provenance, uh, the way people got this hard drive seems to me pretty clear that the Russians could have contrived all those emails that people uh, confirm now that they got from Hunter and all that stuff, or all those pictures, uh, obscene and others. Uh, <laughs> You know, the KGB is good, the GRU is good, but I don't think they could do all those thousands and thousands of things. So the thing seems to be real. Uh, will my former colleagues in the intelligence community be able to persuade uh, the public that they're not real? Uh, even though there's no evidence, uh, we have suspicions that this bears all the earmarks of a Russian information operation who are these people? Well, their statement says that a couple of them have recently worked on uh, Russian information operations, which means they're the ones that help con contrive and construct that intelligence community assessment. The only uh, two words of that title that are correct is assessment, which means a, a, a wireless guess. Intelligence, no, not intelligent. Community, no, community. It was not only three members of that community, FBI, CIA, and NSA, but at latest report, it was only five hand-picked analysts from those three agencies. And I understand now that finally, uh, Mr. Durham up there in, Cal in Connecticut has his hands on this problem, is looking at how it was. Why did they exclude all the other intelligence agencies when they came up with this? Now, James Clapper uh, told us at a private, at a public meeting that, oh, there wasn't enough time. Now, it was, there wasn't enough time to do a, a full intelligence, national intelligence assessment. Well, hello, in October of 2002, there was time, three weeks, three weeks to do a full dress National intelligence assessment, national intelligence estimate, which was the worst one ever produced because it said Iraq had all manner of weapons destructions, ties with Al Qaeda, all that business. Okay. They took three weeks to do that. Now, how many weeks did Obama give them? Four or five. So they couldn't have done the same sort of process? No. They could have, but they didn't want the State Department, pesky State Department that raises questions and writes footnotes or the Defense Intelligence Agency, which has purview over cyber warfare by the Russians, over the GRU, the, the Russian military uh, establishment, which does all this stuff. Now, they want them in there because they're not reliable. So not three agencies, five analysts handpicked by whom? By James Klepper, who knows that the Russians are almost genetically driven to be Devious, lying, uh, coercing, co-opting, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, the whole thing falls apart. The, <laughs> God, the frustration comes, Kevin, uh -huh. 
And we've known this for months. We still can't get this story out, even though, as I say, the New York Times knew that they had a couch strike, for example, had said, we don't have any evidence of Russian hacking. New York Times found that out just like everybody else on May 7th, 2020. So I don't know. I haven't done the math recently. But last time I checked, that's five months of silence on the part of the Times. You know, they can do that because they have so so all embracing control of the media. And the media is the problem. Last thing I'll say is that in my first tweet last night, I, uh, I, I uh, linked to Tucker Carlson. Maybe I mentioned this already, but yeah. when I went back this morning, that link was, uh, we clicked that link and said, now it's been taken down by YouTube. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a Fox News, but my God, that's pretty telling, isn't it? So, you know, as we wrap up here, uh, there's a there's a point that I think should be made because so we're going to upload this and it'll be hopefully hosted by YouTube. Uh, we don't know now what kind of freedom we have to discuss this topic. I'm hoping that it won't be censored. But I think while I have you here, I'd like you to react to one dynamic playing out among the right wing politicians uh, led by uh, Tom Cotton, Senator Tom Cotton, because uh, one thing that I was fully aware of was that he is furious about the censorship of this story and what Twitter and Facebook are doing to the New York Post. But in fact, they are actually applying a rule that he wanted them to apply to the publication of hacked materials because he specifically asked them in September 2018, during a hearing, he asked the executives for Twitter and Facebook what they were going to do to remove the accounts for WikiLeaks and Julian Assange from their platforms because of reasons we've already talked about on this interview, because of the belief that they're involved and implicated. And of course, that's incorrect, um, at least to the degree that we have public knowledge of this and that we have evidence. We, we, we have no evidence to believe that they are, that, that there's anything more to this than what Julian has ever claimed. Uh, and so Tom Cotton's furious, furious, but he in fact is responsible for pushing Twitter and Facebook to adopt a rule against the publication of hacked materials. Well, that's just one of the many ironies here, Kevin. Uh, you know, the old Shakespeare play, Julius Caesar, Audest Veritas, what is truth? Truth used to be the coin of the realm, at least for us analysts who could tell it like it is at the CIA. No more, no more. Uh, truth is whatever you want it to be. And uh, if you didn't have the full cooperation of the mainstream media, in implementing this uh, unconscionable attitude toward the press, uh, then it, it would matter. But the way things now stand, um, will be this will be the the proof will be in the pudding. What will happen with respect to Hunter Biden's hard drive? Will that be a story for the next couple of days? After all, in two days, the last debate uh, will, will occur between. Uh, Joe Biden and the president. So will uh, the the press be able to suppress the information in that as as effectively as it has, for example, suppressed for five months plus the admission by the head of CrowdStrike that there was no Russian hack, that there was no hack of the DNC emails by anybody. Uh, it had to be, uh, or he, CrowdStrike didn't say this, but the only other explanation is that somebody took this thumb thumb drive, put it in a uh, server or a computer, and copied the information, put the thumb drive in their pocket, took it across the ocean to wherever uh, WikiLeaks put that out. So there's a lot of information that we have. Uh, we've uh, reported it ad nauseum. We even got into the Baltimore Sun for the first couple of times we, we rated that. And this goes back to December, December of 2016, almost four years ago. But nobody pays attention and uh, everyone's inundated, including my, my good friends, uh, 
from from university up in New York. You know, they watch they watch Rachel Maddow. They read the New York Times and think that that's all the news that's fit to print. It's a very sorrowful commentary on uh, so-called educated people in our country. Thank you, Ray, for joining. I really appreciated being able to talk to you. And I know that you'll continue to raise a fuss about all of this because it really is important to challenge. And, and I, I'm right there with you being concerned about how these are the cast of characters that are going to haunt us under a Biden administration. These are these very people these former intelligence officials are the ones that are going to keep poking their heads out in order to make our lives miserable. So thank you, Ray. Most welcome.